All, this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drmubeen.com. Welcome to one more show. So the discussion today is about the CDC news that the Candida auris, or Candida means white, auris means ear. This uh, fungus or yeast was found in 2009 in Japan in a woman's ear. That is why the name Candida auris. So uh, CDC has said that Candida auris is is uh, infecting more and more people, although the numbers are still in thousands. However, compared to the previous years, these numbers are much greater. So th there is that alert. And I wanted to make sure that we can look at it and understand what Candida auris is and what is CDC talking about. So let's start our discussion. So for references, this is drbean.com. These references are present in the description of this video as well. In the description of the video, there is a link to drbean.com as well for an enormously lower price. So you can actually buy that. Uh, then here, this is Candida Auris. I don't have the link in the description for this. This is just Wikipedia. You can find it. Uh, this is, all of these links are present. This is general information about Candida Auris from CDC. Then deadly fungus spread rapidly during the pandemic, CDC says. This is tracking Candida auris. This is a study actually based on which the today's news and these discussions are. And I would go over this a little. Then this is Wall Street Journal talking about Candida auris. Then multi-state outbreak of fungal meningitis and other infections. And Candida auris does cause infection of the blood or it circulates in the blood. So fungemia is what we'll call it. Then it can go to nervous system as well, and it can go to the other tissues as well. So this is why meningitis here. Then antifungal agents. One of the reasons for candida or is to be concerning is that 70% of the species isolated for candida auris are resistant to antifungals. Plus it is also found to be resistant to disinfectants like alcohol and bleach. So it needs complex di disinfectants, plus it needs a complex treatment regimen. On top of this, it infects folks with the weak immune system. It is an opportunistic infection. So people who have weaker immune system, it becomes a little more difficult to manage infections in them. Because of that, it can become deadly in them. I think 60% of the patients who get Canada auris, they die. And one of the reasons for them to die is that they already are severely ill. And when this infection is superimposed on their existing illness, then it becomes difficult for them to handle it. This is a link to the yin and yang of current antifungal therapeutics. And this is a diagram of various antifungals. So with these references in mind, let's start with the discussion. So even before this, I want to show you what the data is looking like. So here, this is Candida auris last 12 months. And if you see here, these states that are more red. So Canada was used to be found mostly in the New York City and Chicago areas. However, now it is found in about 30 or more states in the U.S. So, for example, here, California, my state, if you see Canada aureus cases are present, 359. Similarly, Nevada next to us, 384. Arizona, 17. So you can actually see down here the numbers, but these colors show that these states have Candida in them. A few years ago, it was only New York City and Chicago. Okay, so back here. This is a diagram or a microscopic diagram from CDC site. These are gifts for humanity. They're continuing after 22 or 23rd day. So welcome to everyone. And let's start. So Candida auris. Candida means white. Auris means ear. Candida is also a yeast or a fungus 
that is present in many of us on our or on our skin and on our mucosal membrane, especially GIT. However, usually it does not cause infection. We can handle it. Our immune system can keep it at bay. But as soon as our immune system becomes weak, then this this uh, yeast or fungus becomes opportunistic. It can break the barrier of the mucosal membrane and start the infection. Similarly, if there is the there is a wound on the skin, that injured area would also have candida on it. But if we have a weaker immune system, then it would start thriving there as well. Now, the current candida auris is mostly in the healthcare, long-term healthcare facilities or facilities where there are weaker and chronic conditioned patients. In the U.S., it was first documented in 2013. Once it was limited to New York City and Chicago, as I said before, now there are at least in 35 states. Most transmission has occurred in healthcare facilities that offer long-term care to very sick individuals or patients. Cases are still being counted as I showed you some of them. This is my diagram that I had made for my immunology book. Can you imagine? I actually drew this diagram. This is why I signed it as well. Uh, but here, what I was trying to show was on our skin, there are many kinds of... Uh, pathogens present. And if you see here, this is a worm. And then these are some parasites. These are bacteria and then viruses. And then this is fungus. And can you imagine this? I tried to upload this diagram in a, in a system and it refused saying that this diagram has some obscene uh, thing in it. I think they kind of thought this bacteria, which I made was something bad. <laughs> Anyways, so this is a fungus present here. And normally it is just present in the skin, no issues. However, it can break through the skin or if there is an injury, then it can enter the bloodstream or the wound and then cause infections. Now, in the discussions of Candida auris, the, the current discussion, <coughs> excuse me, you would see two types of terms used. Let me actually quickly show you those. <coughs> So if you see here, the cases are clinical cases or colonization screenings. So we should know what these are. Clinical cases mean that those patients who have become ill with candidiosis or with candida infection and have either been diagnosed by culture of the candida, yeast in them, or by their symptoms of a fungal infection. So these are going to be called clinical cases. On the other hand, it is also happening that they are now screening individuals in various healthcare facilities by taking swabs from their skin surfaces to see, <coughs> excuse me, to see that if they have candida or not. So if the swab comes back positive, then that is a non-clinical case or that is a colonized individual. What they're trying to do is that if somebody is colonized, colonized simply means they do not have the infection, but they have the candida auris sitting on their skin's surface or buccal mucosa or the mucosal surfaces. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to isolate such individuals and then treat them to make sure that the candida is removed from their body surfaces. Now, clinical cases, as I said before, they are increasing. So if you see here in the U.S., the first clinical cases or cases were found in 2013 to 2016 and look at the number very low. And then since then, these have been increasing. However, during the pandemic, there has been a much more rise in number as compared to previous years. Now, as I said, Canada Auris was found in a Japanese woman's ear in 2009. Interestingly, we actually do not know where Canada Auris came from. Just like with COVID, we actually do not know exactly where it came from. 2009, it was found in a Japanese woman's ear, but where did it come from? That we have no idea. 
it has been this fungus has been found in a couple of uh, on a beach and an island in indian ocean as well but these are the only two sites ever in the world where this has been found otherwise it is only found on humans and the question is where did it come where did it arrive from on humans so there is a thought that it was probably present in animals and it was not able to jump to human or live in humans because humans temperature was more and it could not survive and thrive in higher temperatures this is actually a very sim- similar story as covid-19 as well remember sars-cov-2 we said was going to infect the lower respiratory system and the systemic uh, tissues because it could survive at higher temperatures otherwise coronavirus is like to live in the cooler temperature that means in the upper respiratory tract is a very similar story here for for the candida as well that it is probably the temperature that has changed so one theory theory that means it's not a proved thing one theory is that maybe as the temperatures are rising the candida adapted itself to live at a higher temperature and because we humans are at higher temperature it has started living in us more easily so that is one possibility another possibility is that is that the widespread use of disinfectants has caused so imagine that this this fungus was present in the environment but we would use disinfectant and it will get killed and so we'll not get infections however over time as we kept using disinfectants some of its cells started becoming resistant and then these are the cells that started thriving and these are the ones that nowadays we're finding to be infecting us another possibility is that antifungal spray on crops is causing other fungi or an other pathogens to die out and this fungus gets an opportunity to grow where other fun- fungi have died so they they make room for this one to grow but once again at the end of the day we have no idea how humans caught it and we have a surprise or a mystery that we don't know other than humans where else is this fungus found and as i said before alcohol and bleach don't seem to be very effective disinfectant for this pathogen for this uh, uh, yeast and as i said before if there is a skin breach or mucosal membrane breach or the weakness of the immune system then this this uh, fungus enters the blood stream and causes fungemia or fungus in the blood stream from there it can go to the nervous system and cause the fungal infection or meningitis of the brain fungal meningitis it can go to other tissues as well and cause disease there it will depend which tissue was it respiratory system or liver or git or what else is involved and the symptoms will appear according to the 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 organ involved however in all cases a common a uh, set of symptoms is fever and chills so an old age home where the residents have fever and chills of unknown origin they may have candida auris so this was my depiction of individuals with fever and chills now other issue with this candida auris is that um antifungals <coughs> excuse me antifungals are not very effective on them it is resistant 70% of the isolates of candida auris are resistant so just a very quick uh, review of antifungals antifungals can be azoles there are four main classes if you see many books and literatures would say three main classes but we actually have four classes my apologies my throat is itchy as well so azoles polyenes five fluorocytosines and echinocandins and i'll explain these in a second echinocandins are the ones that are usually used for candida auris and even the echinocandins are becoming less effective 
for it. Now, just very quickly, azoles are the ones that inhibit the ergosterol development of the fungus. So just like we have cholesterol, fungal cells have ergosterol that is specific to these cells. And there is an enzyme called ERG11 that builds the ergosterols. So azoles can block that enzyme, which in turn blocks the, the fungal cholesterol, if you will, and that causes the cell membranes to be not, or the cell walls to be not uh, produced correctly. So that is one. Again, azoles are not very, very effective for oris. Echino, echinocandins are. And what echinocandins do is that they do a couple of things. Number one, they inhibit the production of glucan, beta-1,3 glucan, which is part of the cell wall component. So they kind of, echinocandins, they kind of disrupt the production of the cell wall of the fungus, and that is how the fungus does not produce more, and the existing fungal cells start becoming damaged. In addition to that, echinocandins also help produce a greater amount of chitin, which are also protein-like structures that are present on the outer side, and they are actually bad for the fungal cell if they start accumulating on the outside. So chitins are increased and glucans are reduced. The end result is that the fungal cell has a bad wall and it cannot survive. For the, as I said before, for the oris, these are the drugs that are mostly useful, but even then 70% resistant. Then there are the, these guys, 5-fluorocysteines. So these are uracil uh, analogs, just like we saw with the COVID as well, that we can have some drugs that are analog to the genetic material. Here we have uracil analogs, which causes the protein synthesis of the fungal or yeast cell to be, to be bad because one of the nucleic protein is incorrect and that causes damaged proteins to be produced, which then causes the fungus cell to not survive. And then finally, polyene group of the antifungals, what they do is they punch holes in the, the wall of the fungus cell. So all of these, essentially what they do is they either have incorrect, and Kyrie is here, they either have incorrect protein synthesis, or they try to damage the cell wall by damaging the existing cell wall or by interfering with production of the new cell wall components. The end result is they act as an antifungus. And Candida auris is resistant to many of them. <laughs> so then what is the solution? There are various companies that are trying to, and my apologies, Kyrie is here and you can see her. <laughs> you can see Kyrie in front of the camera. Okay, so, and it is raining outside, so Luffy is not gone outside, so he is whining downstairs and singing the song of his people, and Kyrie is here. So there is a company called Synexis. They, plus Pfizer, separately, have made um, antifungals for Oris. And they have given their, these antifungals are going through trials. There is another company called Sidara Therapeutics. They have a drug called Rizafungin. Rizafungin has already gone through the trials and has been uh, submitted to FDA for approval as an antifungal for candida in, uh, fungi, including candida auris. So in general, I think that Sidara will win and they would have their antifungal approved very soon. So this is the discussion. If you see here, once again, I would like you to look at this, look at your state as well. If there are your uh, family members in the long-term facilities, please keep an eye on them fever and chills of unknown origin. Normally fever and chill can be because of UTIs as well, because of other infections too. But 
and now Kyrie wants to sit in my lap. However, Candida Oris can do that as well. Okay, so with this, can you see Kyrie? This is Kyrie's tail. So now she wants to sit in my lap. Okay, so let's see a couple of questions and then we stop. M. Gregory says, is there correlation between fungus and overuse of antibiotics? So yes, so this is one of the reasons that we are probably causing the fungi to become resistant by usage of antifungals and disinfectants. <laughs> mean Bean says, I will pass with Pfizer. <laughs> Funny comments, Lorian says, of course they are. Okay, so, so of course, uh, Nipah Methylene Blue has its role as well, although it is not officially looked at, at as a, an antifungal, but because it can go and traverse the cell wall and can become attached there, it may have its effect as well. Dan says, how about Ivermectin? I'm not sure if Ivermectin has role for fungal cells. John is here as well. Hey, John, how are you? Okay, so this is the discussion. And uh, Guy says, isn't fungus debris? I'm not sure, Guy, if I understand this. The fungus itself, debris, fungus are small eukaryotic yeast cells that live like little tiny cells that work together and then they become fungus. M. Gregory says, I miss Luffy. Luffy was down there singing his songs. M. Gregory says, do fungus feed off sugar? So fungus would take whatever nutritional substances are available, including carbohydrates. Skyfrog is here as well, catching up to X speed. <laughs> yes, so Linda, another isolation. Correct. So that is the sad part of this all. Someone says, I'd say the overuse of disinfectant. It is possible, yes. John says, also study out on neutrophils having lower fungicidal efficacy after SARS-CoV-2 for a while, T-cell being lower than SARS-CoV-2 infection as well. So, of course, the immune system becomes weak. Thank you, John. <laughs> Bandana says, always great sketches. Thank you very much. Mark says, uh, amazing art. Thank you very much. This is going to go in the books. Okay, so with this, thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and share if you would like to support this work. If you like this work, you had a break of 22, 23 days. That may have given you an idea you like it or not. So if you like this work, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee. You can use PayPal. You can become part of Patreon's or Substack as well. And I think, uh, best of all, there is a link in the description to buy access to Dr. Bean as well. So with this, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.